in October 2007, I was living in Julian. I was working at the National Weather Service. I saw a smoke plume. That was the beginning of the witch fire. Seeing how quickly that fire was racing to the west was just, it was scary. And the winds were just ferocious, hurricane force winds. It was a beautiful star-filled sky, but then the horizon was just entirely on fire. And I drove home just completely changed by that scene. When you go through an event like a major wildfire, it's something you will remember for the rest of your life. I've been at San Diego Gas and Electric for eight years. My role is to provide meteorological support to the company during all types of weather conditions. Back when I had the opportunity to join SDG&E, that was that moment where I thought, I can start doing something a little different here. It's not just about warning people of the threat, it's about doing something to prevent the wildfire in the first place. We can't talk about all the work that was done over the past 10 years without talking about the story behind it, particularly as it relates to all of us, individuals who have been responsible for a lot of this work. I'm actually the first meteorologist that joined the team here at sdg &E. I came on during the summer of 2009, and that was the first time that we really had devoted meteorology to try to help with decisions that were being made to run the electric system. You know, I, I will tell you personally that uh, when we hired our first meteorologist, I was one of the leaders in the organization that said, you know, do we really need a meteorologist? It's San Diego, right? But to think about what that group of people has accomplished is quite remarkable. They actually created something that didn't exist in any, in any other place. I did talk with the Weather Service. They're planning on issuing a fire weather watch. We knew we have a real problem on our hands that we're trying to solve. Right now, it's looking like somewhere in the 90 mile an hour range. I mean, if you take the model for face value, we're looking at gusts 35 to 40, which is pretty strong for that area. Actually, 35 to 40 would put us above uh, 99th percentile. And a lot of these stations haven't seen San Ana wind gusts down at the coast quite that strong. When I look out my window or I walk out my back door and I look up into the hills around the immediate area, I see devastation. Last year, this area burnt. There was a house and a garage here that, that went up. I mean, I think people come out here for nature. It's beautiful and quiet. Nice place to live. When I come home at night, I hear owls. I hear a distant coyote. We choose to live here because th that's what we like, but we have to be super vigilant. Fire is a real concern here. When I was growing up, we didn't have as many fires. You'd have those accidental fires from vehicles driving by, campfires, things like that, but not the historical fires that we have now. I know that there's a lot of people that still debate climate change. I don't think you can argue with what we've seen the last seven or eight years with the severity of the fires and the fact that the average temperatures, uh, more days of sunlight, all of those things make a worse fire problem for us. Our fire season, which would typically be July through October, has extended to year round. We're seeing much more sporadic rainfall patterns, which are extending the fire season. This is a trend that we've been seeing that is kind of a symptom of our changing climate. What can we do to try to mitigate the impact of wildfires? We really have to understand Santa Ana winds and we have to understand fire weather to really anticipate when a significant event is coming. Santa Ana winds typically first show up in the fall at the tail end of our dry season when the vegetation is just parched. When those first early season storms start dropping out of Canada, they bring very cold air into the desert southwest, particularly up in the Great Basin. 
And when that cold air reaches our mountains, it spills over and warms up significantly as it heads toward our coast. And that's when you end up with temperatures climbing into the 90s or even 100s. And at the same time, because that air is descending the mountains, the humidity dries out significantly. We're dealing with hurricane force winds at times. The Santa Ana winds are awful. At the peaks, they're going 80 to 100 miles an hour. If there's a spark, nothing's gonna stop that fire. In San Diego County, anywhere from 60 to 80% of the brush and trees you see on the hill are dead. We could get 500 inches of rain. It's not gonna bring back a tree or a brush that's already dead. So as soon as it gets warm and dry, we're gonna be into burning conditions. The fire season's gotten longer. The fire season's gotten hotter. A lot of different reasons for it. Drought, climate. We had a very wet winter. That vegetation's gonna die, and it has. That dead fuel is still out there on our hillsides and is still a, a big threat. We're seeing fires do things that we've, we've, never, we've never seen before. As a native San Diegan who lives in Hamul, I've seen a lot of impact over the years and I've had to evacuate twice. So I, I really get it. There's been a heavy focus for over 10 years in SDG and on fire preparedness, starting with our meteorology unit. Are you here? From the very beginning, that we needed to build tools that were specific to the utility that could help them make the best decision possible. The goal was to maintain a safe and reliable system. We needed to understand the weather on every circuit that we operate. So we started putting in weather stations and then more weather stations. And soon we had the largest utility weather network that existed anywhere in the world. Everybody who lives in Southern California has heard that the strongest winds funnel through the passes and the canyons. But what we found out is that a lot of the weather stations that were giving us our strongest wind speeds were at the base of steep slopes. And those accelerate to incredible speeds when they descend the mountains. And once we understood that, then we were able to look at our infrastructure a little differently. Our mantra is no fire starts from our equipment. How do we improve our chances of saving property? Well, we do it by improved vegetation management along our transmission corridors. Our inventory consists of 460,000 trees, but we have another one and a half million trees out there that are in proximity to our overhead electrical. How do we get ahead of that? How do you prevent trees from getting into the wires? How do you prevent trees from falling into wires? We took the approach of removing direct overhangs. That included tree trimming, pole brushing. Pole brushing requires us to clear a 10-foot radius at the base of the pole to ensure that any molten material that comes to the ground doesn't propagate a fire outside the circle. I've watched fires engulf houses, and it's very devastating for everybody in this company. We do what we can to be better prepared because it, it protects our customers. I think our job is to anticipate when we're going to see significant weather events. One of the next steps that we did was get into forecast modeling to develop very customized and fine-tuned weather models that could forecast strong winds coming. We needed a way to really determine how we operate the electric system every day. So we built the Fire Potential Index. It tells everybody in the company what the fire threat is today and what it is for the next seven days. It's a very simple stoplight chart, green, yellow, red. We've come to the point now where we share this product pretty broadly with our stakeholders in the community. What we liked about the Fire Potential Index is when we'd see a yellow condition or an orange condition seven days out, we could start planning, staffing additional helicopters, additional engines. We didn't have that kind of tool before. The Fire Potential Index, we use it every day, 365 days a year to safely operate the electric system. Whereas the Santa Ana Wildfire Threat Index will tell us what is the fire threat with a Santa Ana wind. Just definitely a lot stronger in that wind corridor through North County, it looks pretty vicious. Um, this, looks, this looks like a big one and then we'll coordinate closely with the weather service. 
We wanted to take all of this data, create a tool that then would rate the fire potential associated with these Santa Ana wind events. In other words, the winds are coming, the vegetation is dry, is this a Cat 1 or a Cat 5? So what sdg &E did, they've put this focus to emergency preparedness, specifically with the Santa Ana wildfire threat index. It's a game changer for our folks. All year long, we're inspecting the lines, finding out if there's been any debris in the line, if there's been any damage to our infrastructure. We take various steps to ensure that we have a reduced fire risk on our electrical system. One of the main things we do is to fire harden our system. We change our wood pole structures to steel poles. We also separate the power lines more so that as the winds come through, the wires don't slap together. All right, we're ready at uh, 37, That's ready for the pull. San Diego Gas and Electric is at the leading edge of fire hardening and weather hardening our system. So we have uh, 2,100 poles, about 160 miles of power lines. We're fire hardening here in the back country. All right, you're all hooked up. It's a more stout, weather hardened, fire hardened system. that can withstand high winds, more severe weather, and it just improves the safety and the fire risk to our system out here in the high fire risk areas. All right, uh, good job, guys. Uh, I guess that's it. Yeah, thank you. Good job. All right, that and another thing that we do is aerial observations. We have the Airbus H145 that can do our inspections. Our workhorse really is the Airbus H145. When we purchase the H145, we also purchase a FLIR system, forward-looking infrared. We could use the FLIR to find any kind of hot spots and see how close those hot spots are to our infrastructure. The heat signatures gives you a better picture, a better definition of what you're looking for. It gives you another look versus just the visual eye. And it's able to tell you what could be missing from that picture. What's changed since the last time that you looked at it. That information comes back and can be evaluated for maintenance, for replacement, to really understand how our system is doing in our aviation services department. There's been a very deliberate, strategic approach to preparedness. We want to make sure that fires that start in San Diego County are stopped at 10 acres or less. In this type of climate, prescribed burns reduce the amount of vegetation that is out there. From a prevention standpoint, we've reached a crossroads in, in our culture of the fire service. We can no longer just respond to fires. We need to start addressing the fire problem before it occurs. Fire is part of the natural ecosystem. We don't want to be having fires in September with Santa Ana winds, but there's a lot of times in April or May when we have lower intensity burning. So a prescribed fire is when we're going to go out and light a fire under parameters or conditions that we set. It's really important for us to ensure the safety of the three and a half million customers that we have the privilege to serve. Our focus is to ensure that we have the safest grid in America. One of the tools in our portfolio is to de-energize power in high-risk situations. That's a tool that we don't use lightly. We use it actually quite thoughtfully and deliberately to keep people safe. Public safety power shutoffs is when a utility evaluates the environment and the current conditions and there is a high likelihood for a fire ignition, meaning that the fire potential index is showing really, really high. And so we will turn off the power in advance of those conditions materializing in order to keep that community safe from fire. 
two to three days out before an event materializes, then we start communicating with our customers that are gonna be impacted, telling them winds are forecasted, there's a high probability that SDG&E will be turning off your power for safety. Uh, start preparing, get your emergency plans in place. It is inconvenient when the power is turned off. You know, when you live out here, you can't rent at the store every day. You're shopping for a week, a month, you have freezers full of food. So there are real concerns and legitimate complaints to the power going out. When we are forecasting that we are going to turn off the power in excess of 24 hours, then we will stand up pre-identified community resource centers to support that community. When they came to us and talked to us about the, the possibility of using our building as a resource center, we jumped on that. We said, great, we want that for our community. Nobody likes their power shut off, losing food in the refrigerator, having water issues if you've got livestock, but we've also tried to mitigate some of those issues. They have generators here, they have resources, they have snacks, Red Cross comes in all kinds of services just right here in our community. They're really, I think, trying to help, especially after the big fires. Almost as soon as we start planning for the power shutoff, we're also putting our plan together for restoration, because what's the goal? Is to get people back online, get electricity back flowing through those wires, our sectionalizing method allows us to do that in a way that is the least impactful for communities. And that means that we create different breakpoints on a particular circuit or community to ensure that we can shut off and turn on in phases so that we don't impact the community as a whole. And we're doing more of that because we realize that every time we shut power off, it impacts the lives of our customers. Thirty-six years in the fire service, I say, what is a utility getting involved in, in, in fire suppression for? That's that partnership between first responders and SDG&E, trying to augment what may be missing in prevention and in fire suppression. Almost every emergency other than medical aid is going to involve gas and electricity or fire. Sometimes that local law enforcement officer is the first responder really important for their safety to know what the risks and hazards and how to safely go about that. So we train and exercise every year with the fire service in San Diego County. Fire coordinators here at stg &E, they will come to the command post and they'll ask how they can assist and we will share with them the situation of the fire. They become a part of the team. The fire service in San Diego County goes the extra mile to make sure that we understand each other, they're collaborative, they're cooperative, everybody's on the same page. Starting back in 2010, we worked with UCSD to help install mountaintop cameras all across this network. When there's an ignition, we're usually getting the first notification from the fire agencies. When fire is reported in San Diego, we have cameras on it within seconds. To this day now, we monitor well over 100 mountaintop cameras. And that's really been a game changer with our ability to monitor any wildfire activity on the ground. This camera network was in collaboration with SDG&E and their meteorology center. These cameras are high definition, they're pan, tilt, zoom. Our whole goal is to confirm 911 calls quickly, provide situational awareness as first responders are going to the fire. They can look at the camera network on their tablet or iPhone. And so when they're going to the fire, they can see how it's changing, how dynamic it is. So here, the cameras also help with evacuation in these extreme events because people are panicked trying to get out. A lot of times there's only one or two main roads in and out. Our first responders see where the traffic is coming from the fire. We can get the first responders in quicker. We utilize the cameras now literally every single day. Our dispatch center can control the cameras. And we had a great success story from last summer. 
We had a fire in, in the south part of the county. Within probably 30 seconds of the first 911 call, we all knew we had a major fire. But more importantly, the aircraft and the additional resources that were on their way down to the fire on the border, we diverted en route. So we literally had the first airplane over the west fire in about a minute and a half. After we triangulate exactly where this fire is, the next step goes right into simulating that fire. It'll tell us how fast it's going to spread without any fire suppression, the direction it's going to go in. It will tell us what communities will be impacted. We're taking all of this information that we've been developing and building on for the last decade, and now these new systems enable us to simulate virtual wildfires all over San Diego. Every night, after we run all of our weather models and we get all of our information about the fuels, then that's when we start simulating these virtual fires. So we do that every day. Every day we're simulating over 10 million virtual wildfires. Keeping our finger on that pulse 365 days a year really helps us see events coming and prepare appropriately. How can sdg &E help reduce our risk to these fast-moving fires? And we came up with aerial firefighting. Yes, Tanker 7-0 and Tanker 7-1, Copter 12. You said about 11 miles? Yeah, 11.3, uh, 166 degrees. All right, go get them, fellas. We have the Ericsson Air Crane, 2,650 gallons of water drop capability. Generators, one, two, lights go out. Rectifiers, one, two, lights go out. All right, check. At this time, the largest rotary wing aerial firefighting platform in the United States, SDG has made that available to all jurisdictions in San Diego County and Southern Orange County 365 days a year. The partnership is that we provide the funds to maintain it, and Cal Fire does our dispatch for us. We are getting excellent dispatch times with the air crane. We're about a 15 minute response from that dispatch call to actually being what we would call wheels up, so takeoff of the air crane. Helicopters like our air crane are very important because they can refill without landing. They can hover refill, they can see snorkel refill. With a large helicopter, we're capable of getting more water on the fire. Having the air crane here year-round has really increased our capabilities, and it corresponds to this year-round fire season that we have. Having that thing here in San Diego 365 days a year is a great insurance policy and certainly gives me a lot of comfort. Communications are probably the most important aspect of a wildfire response because the communities are feeling really vulnerable. We communicate quite a bit in the form of town hall meetings. I'm calling this meeting to order. sdg &E has come out to inform us on any future plant power outages. Robin Herrick is responsible for these community centers. We'll have people there to help you sign up for alerts, give you information on how to find the weather stations. And we explain to the community what we do and why we do it. Very often that those trees, even though dry looking on the outside, are very conductive internally. And that's exactly what happens when you're up there tree trimming and the branch gets away from you, you're right into the power line and you're causing arcs and sparks. And then we solicit their feedback because while we are the experts in running the electric system, we're not necessarily experts in those impacts on those communities. That's a great question. And I work with engineers, and I work with operators, and I work with the field crews. We sit down in these meetings, and we pour over the data, and we say, how can we minimize the impacts of these shutoffs? For most events, we have found a way in a lot of communities to start reducing the impacts, both in terms of the number of people affected and the duration. SDG and E has probably been more community active. I actually know people at SDG&E now. 
prior to that, I thought they were just the big utility company. Well, they've brought themselves back into the community. Give SD Genie another round they've of made applause. themselves visible. They're here to help. They're here to listen. My job gives me purpose. I know every time that I'm in this room, I am contributing to protecting the greater good of our communities. I'm a San Diego native. It matters what happens to me here. In 2007, we suffered devastating wildfires here in the San Diego region. And from that was born our commitment to radically improving our approach to wildfire mitigation. Our employees, our leadership rallied around this mission to make our system as safe as it can be with respect to wildfires. Our employees live in all these areas. It, it's hard to watch people that you care for in here um, respond, you know, still, still responding and still doing what's best for their communities while their family, while they're watching their house go up in flames. Um, and that's when it becomes personal. I often refer to this fire problem as it takes a village. This is not just the fire department or the sheriff's department. It takes all of us. SDG need, they're part of this community. Their employees live here, they work here. They don't want to see their communities destroyed. And they're part of this village that's addressing this wildfire problem that we have. When we started this after 2007, there was no blueprint in terms of what to do. I'm proud of the work that we have done over the last decade, and I'm probably more excited about the next 10 years. We have 4,000 employees that are always thinking about how can we reduce and mitigate the threat of wildfires. So whether it's how do we better communicate with customers, how do we better innovate, what technology we can use. All employees are always thinking about this. The opportunity to come out of retirement and work for sdg &E and have a positive impact on the planning, the preparedness, the response to recovery operations putting the type of resources into it to do it the right way. That's what I'm most proud of. There is a culture inside the company where everyone feels a sense of responsibility, not only to sdg &E, but to the communities that we, that we all live in. We're always gonna get Santa Ana winds. We're, we're always gonna have high fire danger, but that doesn't necessarily mean we have to have the big fire. You know, Steve and I had talked about the 2007 fires and he came to me saying, never again are we going to see an event like this in San Diego. Because that's, that's what we're looking at. All that we're doing here is about never again. My mission now is to make sure that on the next big Santa Ana wind event, I can drive to that same spot and see those same stars but see zero fire on the landscape. That's the vision.